So, pre-season is up and running. It started last week. And we're going to look at some of the players that old Thomas Tuchel has, in fact, got at his mercy for the time being. So, uh, yeah, stick around. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Blue Pride of London. I'm your host, Nathan, and welcome back to the channel. So let's get the admin out of the way. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please do so if you are a Chelsea fan and you are interested in all things Chelsea, this might be a channel that you could be interested in following. So yeah, hit the subscribe button. And if you do in fact like this video, hit the like button because it helps us out quite well. This is in fact our second video of the channel. So if you have rejoined us, welcome back. But if you've discovered us for the very first time, welcome to the pride and yeah i hope you enjoy the content so guys getting into this video pre-season has started amongst the majority of the premier league clubs and last week was the time where chelsea football players started coming back from their holidays but with one little detail obviously there are a lot of chelsea first teamers that are away on international duty of course, the English and the Italian players are in the final of Euro 2020, so they aren't necessarily back in pre-season. And a lot of the players that are sort of coming from the later stages of the Euros are also having an extended break to sort of give their legs a rest and a little bit of R&R &R after quite a hectic and quite a few of them did a lot of travelling over the sort of Euros themselves. And of course, Brazil made it through to the final of the Copa America as well. So, you know, Thiago Silva is also away on international duty or and having a bit of an extended break. So what does that mean for the players that have in fact returned to Chelsea? There must be quite a sort of a lot of space, a very few players. Maybe if your academy players have come up through the ranks to train with the so-called first team. But there are a few familiar faces coming back from their summer break who weren't involved in the Euros and who haven't been involved in Chelsea for a while. So let's have a look at some of those players. So one of the first players I want to speak about is Ross Barkley. Now, I've always been a fan of Ross Barkley. Ever since his breakout season at Everton, I always saw him as a bit of a mixture of a Frank Lampard, Steven Gerrard. He's a very strong, fast, and a very talented midfielder. He can score some very, very good goals, hold up the ball very well. And when I used to play football manager, I did in fact used to buy Ross Barkley as one of my very first buys. And within my game, he became a Chelsea and English legend amongst the field. So when Chelsea finally bought him, I was gagging for him to come to Chelsea for such a very, very long time. I was over the moon. I really thought we found a potential replacement for the empty void that was in our midfield, which was in fact Frank Lampard. And of course, I always enjoy when we bring in new English talent. And yeah, I was. I was extremely pleased. Ross hasn't necessarily hit the ground running at Chelsea. He has put in some really good performances, but with a few niggles and a few injuries, he has sort of like disappeared into the wayside a little bit. And yeah, the loan that he had against Aston Villa last season didn't necessarily go as planned. The whole point of that was for him to go off, get some first team experience, and then come back to Frank Lampard's team this season, sort of like a new player. And for me personally, this loan move to Aston Villa came as a sort of like a <laughs> out of the blue. Did not expect it. I really thought Frank Lampard was going to use him last season quite a fair bit. But instead, he chose and Chelsea chose to maybe get some first team experience over in Aston Villa. And it wasn't the best. It wasn't the best. He picked up a few more injuries. His performances weren't necessarily the best. And I always feel that when a team loans a player out. They don't necessarily plan to always add them into the first team. Of course, they want to use their own players, the players that they have bought and hopefully develop. So to bring in a loan player and play him constantly and potentially not be able to have him in the following season, I always thought of maybe this could have been a bit of a, like your play when, as and when we need you, which it sort of turned out in the end. But of course, Ross Barkley has come back to Chelsea and under a new manager as well. And I'm pretty sure he's going to want to try to impress. Now, I still believe he is young enough to sort of break into a Chelsea side, but a little bit like Kevin De Bruyne. Chelsea have got a lot of stick because of letting Kevin De Bruyne leave and, oh, what a great player he's become. Chelsea had him on his books, yada, 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 and all this stuff. 
Chelsea's midfield has always been a tough midfield to break into, especially if you're not yet established, which obviously De Bruyne wasn't, and exactly what Ross Barkley is as well. We have a very strong midfield. We have international players who play for the countries year in, and we've got a World Cup winner. We've got potential European Championship winners, depending on who wins between England and Italy. And yeah, where would he fit into that midfield? Especially the way that Thomas Tuchel does in fact play with like wing backs at the moment. And we'll get into those type of sort of formations at a later video. But can he break his way into this Chelsea team? He has a couple of weeks, maybe before the rest of the first team come along, to impress Thomas Tuchel with his talent, with his skills, with his speed. Because you have to remember, Ross Barkley is actually quite a fast player when he gets up and going. So yeah, that's one player that I would very much be interested to see where he can go coming into the new season if he stays for Chelsea, because there is also rumours that he is one of the players that potentially Chelsea will get rid of this summer to make up some money to buy bigger and better players. But I think he's definitely one that we need to look out for. Now, another very talented English midfielder that we need to be looking out for is, of course, Rubens Loftus-Cheek. This guy was a powerhouse. Chelsea fans have been screaming for oh, almost 10 years for this player to sort of like come into the Chelsea team. And he almost did it. I'm sorry, he played his most games for Chelsea and probably his best season in a Chelsea shirt. And, you know, he was developing very, very, very well. He broke into the England team. I think he got a man of a match against Germany when we beat them in a friendly. And it was just sort of like the powerhouse of Chelsea's midfield has finally broken into the Chelsea first team. And alas, injuries once again. And oh, the guy is just struck with some of the worst luck going when it comes to injuries. It was an injury that sort of kept him out of the frame for such a long time. And when he finally came back to fitness, he wasn't as quick or as agile as he was. So a lone move to Fulham last season was probably best for him. Maybe his type of powerhouse, his type of strength, his ability, his skill, and he had a decent goal in him every now and then could potentially help Fulham and sort of like put him on the market to break into the Chelsea first team as well. But he faces the same type of challenge that Barkley faces. How do you fit these players into the current Chelsea midfield? Usually, especially when we've got three players, four players that are going to be sort of like operating in that particular midfield as well. So that leaves like two, maybe three positions left for these talented Englishmen as well. You know, let's look at the English side at the moment. They are full of talent and we have two potential superstars just sat waiting for their opportunity. And again, He's come along and he's going to give it a good go to try to impress the new coach what he can do. But of course, he, just like Barkley, want to start playing regular football. They want to see if they can break back into an England team that is currently doing very, very well. So let's, again, watch this space. These are two players that you can really sort of, sort of expect big things of if they can get an opportunity. Staying in midfield now, we have Bakayoko. Oh, where do we start with Bakayoko? Promising player as he came into Chelsea, did a sensational season at Monaco. And when we got him at a reasonably decent price, considering what he was and what he was capable of doing, he put in a couple of good performances for Chelsea and, you know, eventually started playing really, really bad. There's no if, ways, but to ballot. Chelsea fans didn't like him. The Chelsea board seemed to go off him. The Chelsea coach at the time, which I think was Conte, really didn't like him. And considering the fact that we had a better holding midfielder, you know, he just sort of fell to the wayside. And yeah, believe it or not, he is still on Chelsea's books. He is still a Chelsea player and he would have come back into pre-season in the last week or so to try to again prove his colours, but then again also maybe try to force a move out of Stamford Bridge because, you know, who wants to stay at a club that doesn't love you? Does he want to break in this Chelsea team? Is he getting hold of his agent saying, listen, you need to get me out. I've done some great things in Italy. I want to stay in Italy. Whatever the price, just get me out of the club. Or is he going to try to prove his worth and go, do you know what, Chelsea? I am a good player. You're missing out on something. You need to keep me and play me in this midfield, which again, as I've mentioned, is a very, very talented midfield already. And where does he fit? Would he want to be a bit-time player? as well so you know these are three midfielders that have come in 
back out of the sort of like the darkness of the Premier League and around Europe. And uh, yeah, we just need to sort of keep an eye. I, I think he's leaving, like, without a doubt. I don't. I don't think he's going to stay at Chelsea for the summer. And you know, we could probably again generate some good bit of money to buy a bigger and better player in one of the positions that we're looking at. So yeah. Oh, and we are still in the midfield. The forgotten man at Chelsea. I think he probably only did one good performance with that cracking goal. And it's such a forgettable player that I can't remember who he scored it against. But Danny Drinkwater. Yeah, yeah, Danny Drinkwater. You know, we paid through the nose for the Leicester player, the Premier League winner. And yeah, like he's literally fallen out of favour. I don't know how long he's got left on his contract. I don't know if it's just simply as you know, we'll just wait till his contract sort of expires and we just got to get rid of him. He has had a couple of loan moves since in the last couple of seasons or so, but they've not appeared to anything. Like I've, I've not even seen hide or hair of Danny Drinkwater in these coming months. So when he returns back to training, even if he has returned back to training, I've not really seen much of him also on the photographs. Will Chelsea try to force let you just, <laughs> we'll take anything for him. Just, just get him off our books. Because, you know, he came to us as a promising Englishman. He came to us at a quite expensive price. He came to us as a very recent Premier League winner. And, you know, I can imagine his wages would have been quite high at the time as well. So I can't really see much more from Danny Drinkwater. I don't think he'll be playing in a Chelsea shirt ever again. Will he leave this summer? Quite possibly. If his contract runs out, if his contract has already run out, I don't, I don't know. So yeah, let, let's let's move on because I think Danny is done. Now here's an interesting for you. Considering we have a lot of problems scoring goals and up front, is Bashawari the answer to our prayers? Now he always have a special place in our hearts because he scored the goal against West Brom that won us our last Premier League. And yes, he is a very exciting player. He's also quite quick. And I think his numbers for Belgium are pretty good. Now, even though for Belgium, he is a potential bit time player behind the Kaku. So I don't know if he's sort of like keeping up the numbers as much as he has done. And, you know, has he actually come back from preseason training yet? Because, you know, let's face it, he's was part of the Belgian team that got uh, last 16 quarterfinals, quarterfinals, last 16. Might need to check that. But, you know, is he a potential player? Uh, looking at it, Tammy Abraham looks like he's on his way out. He would have come back from pre uh, to preseason training as well to try to prove himself. But after what happened last season, when he's just literally dying to get on the pitch and every single Chelsea fan is screaming at their TV screens, for God's sake, we need a goal. They're not scoring. Tammy is our highest goal scorer. Why isn't he on the pit? Why isn't he even in the team? Up front, and we all know that we are looking to get like, you know, Harlan and potentially another goal scorer or anything like that, because the guys that we've bought already don't seem to be firing all cylinders. Cylinders don't seem to be firing on all cylinders. Get that one out. But is Bashawari an answer? Is he also an answer if you know Giroud? Does in fact leave. I think he's quite close to a move to AC Milan. So uh, yeah, is he is he is he our third choice? Would he be our third choice striker? Would he be happy with that type of thing? I think he's still quite young. He's mid twenty, so he still has a couple of years left on him. Or again, is he going to be one of the players that we try to shift in the potential hope to get more funds for again bigger players? Yada 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 yada. So meh. So here's a player in defence that you might want to keep a good eye out. Of course, it is Saar. Saar is a French international player who we got for free last season. We didn't pay a penny for him, but we loaned him out pretty much straight to Porto to get some first team experience. Now, I don't know too much about him. I didn't see much about him over in Porto. I don't think he set the world alight in that league. But, you know, he was a player that we got in. They really, really wanted him. He signed for Chelsea with the idea that I think he was guaranteed to be loaned straight back out. And yeah, he was one for the future, pretty much. That's I think that's the way that Chelsea looked at him for. Now, Thiago Silva has, in fact, signed an extension to his deal. So he's with us for a, another season. And yeah, we do have some very talented central defenders. So could Saar be, in fact, a backup for a potential sort of like shakeup within the back four or the back five or the back three of Chelsea? But this is definitely a player that a lot of Chelsea fans are excited about 
On paper, he looks like a beast of a player. He's strong, he is physical, he is fast, he's great in the air. And potentially him and Zuma out back center there, a good French connection could do a lot for us. So, you know, that's that's the defender sort of done and dusted. These are the players that sort of come back into the fold. Very limited number of players before all of the big first team players come back from their international breaks. And yeah, going into the pre-season friendlies because they're quite exciting. Now, pre-season is going to be a little bit different this season as it is usually. Sometimes Chelsea goes off to abroad and try to sort of like branch out the brand Chelsea. This season is a little bit different. Obviously, traveling is going to be quite difficult. Coronavirus is still something that is very, very serious in the world. So Chelsea, Arsenal and Tottenham have come together to do a little mini league with the help of Mind. Mind is a charity which is all about mental health, mental illness. And if I'm correct in saying that they've created this sort of like mini league where all three of the teams will be playing a one-off game with each other to potentially sort of like raise some funds and awareness for mental health. We're playing two London derbies. Two London derbies before we kick off our season is, oh, it's, it's mouth-watering. It's sensational. We start off on the 1st of August against Arsenal at the Emirates, which is very, very nice, very, very mouth-watering. And even though this is a friendly, it is still a London derby. It is still two teams that want the pride of London. Like I said in my last video against Arsenal, who we played pretty early in the season, you know, pride is on the line. You know, at the end of the road, the fans are going to want to beat Arsenal in a preseason or in a competitive game. And Arsenal have been a bit of a bogey team for Chelsea in the last season or so. So it's mouthwatering. And then just three days after that, we're playing Tottenham on the 4th of August at Stamford Bridge. Again, a London derby. And it is beautiful to sort of see this sensational. It's a competition. It's a competition. Regardless if you slap a friendly on the front of the name, the London derbies. So let's let's just get excited by it. Like I'm actually really excited. I think it's for a great course. And of course, Arsenal and Tottenham will play each other at some point before the season starts as well. And you know, who doesn't like a good North London derby? And yeah, I think there's a there's a potential for a little bit of sort of upsies before the season's even started. But guys, those are my thoughts on the preseason players coming in. Looking forward to seeing the rest of the players after they've done their international break to come along and join preseason and those two preseason friendlies as well. I think it's going to be very challenging. I would love to hear your thoughts on any of the players that I've mentioned here today. So write them in the comments. I will always strive to answer as many as I can. Consider me quite a young channel. If you do comment below, there's a high chance I will comment to you. But going back, guys, please consider subscribing to the channel. Like this video if you did, in fact, like it. And I will see you in the next video. Up the chills. See you later. Thank you. Bye.